I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. As sorry says, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. It shall shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. All right, you guys. So we, we're back in action now. We have uh, our alliances have picked the songs, as you know, tonight. And up next is Rock of Ages. Um, the comment is, at the beginning of Rock of Ages' journey, we had a roots poll where we had so songs from genres that influenced the birth of the rock genre. This time we had a rockin' all over the world poll where we traveled around the world to places where rock genre had influenced and spawned regional scenes, genres that originated in a specific region. We had picks that took us to Germany, Turkey, Cambodia, Zim, wait, should I be reading those parentheses? Uh, yep. Uh, England, sorry, Cambodia, Zam Zamb Zambia, England, and the U.S. To name a few. The winter song, uh, the winter song took us to the Sahara region of the, of northern and West Africa, where Tishmoran or Asuf, internationally in known as desert blue style of rock, was born. Desert blues is a fusion of rock and blues with Tareg, Malian, or North African music. The winning artist, Modo Mukhtar, is a Tareg songwriter based in Agadez, Niger. Modo Mukhtar was born in the Nigerian village of Tikbaradan. So <laughs> I'm glad you're reading. In Arlet, a mining town. After listening to artists such as Abdallah Amogubugu, he wanted to play the guitar, but his family disapproved of electric music. Probably because they're Muslim. Muslim. Uh, they uh, disagreed with electric music, so he had to build his own guitar using bicycle cables for strings. His cool. music first gained attention through a trading network of mobile phones and memory cards in West Africa. He sings in the Tamashek language. This song is from his sixth album, Afrique Victime. Afrique Victime. It might be that. This was a pick by the big homie Negative Vibes, subhanAllah. Okay. That, that that was quite the intro. Dear listener, this is uh this we are not the McDonald's of reaction channels, dear listener. We are we are a three million fine dining <laughs> reaction channel. Yes, true. Do things like this. Yes. Okay? Uh not your basic little channel. Mdu Maltar. Chris Mitten, live on EXP. Let's try it, dear listener.
just got blocked. Okay. I just don't feel comfortable in my hands. So look, guys. So I, I am... Yeah, the thing got blocked. Thank you guys for waiting. But we all got to experience the band together in in their their attire, and I just don't think. Yeah, I just don't think this is a band that you can skip the visual presentation. You know what I'm saying? Just because this is like a global thing, and, and that's part yeah, of it. That's, it's I agree. Part of the, that's part of the energy. So, um, for the person who we did this for, like, I'm sorry we couldn't hear hear the thing in total, like live together, on your guys' end. But but I do think that it was one of the most like important visual experiences for us all to have. Um, uh, considering like the way that he played, like he had a very interesting yeah, like, uh, it looked like it was technique. He was using it looked like he was using his uh, pointer finger hmm. as as the main. Yeah, yeah, it was just very very different style of. Um, and then the the choices that they made sonically were also. A little bit different than I than I thought. Go ahead. What were you saying? I, I can't remember what I was going to say before, but the I liked the visuals and the like the stuff that they were wearing, especially the white thing that he had like around his neck that was all the way down to the floor. I thought whenever people wear something that is, I don't know if that's necessary where they are from. It looked like a nuisance to me, like to have something that's dragging all the way down the floor. Uh, like that. They were Nigerian, cool. right? Yeah, it looked it looked cool. Like it fit the whole outfit. Fit I thought, and I liked that everybody was like like that way and, I, and it was it didn't sound like like it felt like it had like like obviously you had the electric guitar the drums and stuff like that but it felt like it definitely had like some other type of musical um wasn't your normal yeah fusion that happened yeah. with it and i don't know what style of music that they like added into it but i but i definitely was like there's something there that i haven't really that's kind of like fitting in here that was kind of cool um obviously lyrically i, I couldn't understand stand like it wasn't in english so we're gonna look at the lyrics now because we just stayed watching the video the whole time um oh for any of you who's watching this now i obviously had to change that video out and we had to put in a lyric video or something something else or silence it completely depending on how youtube reacts so um just so you know you should actually go watch the video we're referencing so you can see these visuals yeah i don't know ian i'm i'm, I'm probably with ben on this relative to music theory um because it, it I don't believe that art is subjective, but I also don't believe that music theory explains, okay, why does this sound like this X, Y, Z? This is why this sounds like that. This is why this lines are lined with that, et cetera, et cetera. But we did not get smells like Teen Spirit from that. We did not get blind from that. Mm -hmm. Music theory comes afterward to tell us why it sounded the way it sounded and why we love it so much and all this other stuff but but now you can create music on music theory right i'm with ben i'm with ben on that yeah i mean there's people and and that's probably one of the reasons why i don't like progressive as a genre because to me it's people taking music theory and putting a bunch of shit oh. in and putting it out there and it's like yeah you sound good but to me it's like there's no art behind it in my um but I do think that that's important because I'm sure that these guys are violating some rules or something that you know, whatever, you know, I don't, you know it, it, it's just, and maybe that's just a romantic to me. Like I remember when Sean sat me down in my, my third lesson, he started introducing the concept of music theory. I was like, no, this is coming from everybody's heart. And he was like, well, it is, man. It's just, you know, you figured out what things that your heart likes to hear <laughs> that's, the way, that's, that's the way that's the way like, yeah that's the way you like explained it as he explained it for me but uh yeah <laughs> like uh, i'm with I, i'm 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 more with ben on the this like the experiential side of what i what i you're an apple dragon that's yeah yeah that's the other thing too it's like you know music theory people are really smart you know not, you know, getting better. Well, Ben's the smartest person I know. So I don't know how that works, but yeah, he's the exception. There you uh, go, Okay, so, so, so visually, I figure, I, 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 that's why I said, like, his parents would not bless electric music because he's a Muslim. So Muhammad did not like music in general. He did allow for, you know, like, tribal drums and stuff like that, but other than that, he didn't like it. So if you're a Muslim, you're not supposed to. That's why, like, that's where the whole genre of, like, the nasheed got invented. The nasheed is where you use your voice to be the instrument. So it's like, ah, It's ah. unbelievably beautiful. And then, yeah. then he 
did me the disservice, or actually, I don't know, it's, it's kind of funny, where it explained to me like what's actually being said, and then I've seen it done where the person is like singing it, but they're singing it in like English, so you can hear what they're saying. And... Right. It's right, just right, not right. what I expected based off of the way they made their voices sound in another language. Um, it's very beautiful sounding, but... The, the Dustin is true. The, it, it is true. Like, your, your playing will even open up if you understand it. At least the basic level. That, that makes sense. Um, yeah. You know. So, like, the, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that's like, yo, how did you get that up so quickly? It's like, I know that shape looks like me. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, right here, Nugget of Vibe said, it's worth noting uh, that for a band, <laughs> they're blending local musical styles developed outside the Western ear, which is where you get those patterns, intervals, rhythms, etc. Right. Which I said, like, when I was right. listening to it, there was something that I'm like, I, that's unfamiliar to me, but also something familiar there, too. Well, I'm watching this foodie guy. He does all this, like, highbrow food stuff. Yeah. And obviously, if you get wait, are you talking about the one from last night? Yeah, and if you he get, goes to those restaurants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get three Michelin stars, then you're like the elite of the elite of restaurants in the world. But they also do like the top fifty restaurants in the entire world. And this was in Peru. I'm gonna say it's Peru. This Peruvian restaurant, like it was a beautiful area, like the jungle. They carved it out, and it's like because it's like this jungle atmosphere, like everything is fresh, like the salad got oh. picked like 20 minutes what? ago type of shit, yeah. And so they want, and, and the guy, the guy's idea was brilliant. He's like, there's like X or Y or Z amount of wildlife in this area that cannot be found anywhere else. They've got like 80% unique life, you know, whatever, whatever in their area. So what he did was he created a menu so that only his restaurant is serving us because what? like are you serious yeah and and so they won they won the number one restaurant in the world but they didn't get they did they, they must piece out the pita. they don't have any michelin rank why because michelin doesn't even go there oh shoot. so to, to if you think about what negative vibes is saying that's kind of the idea like on the one hand, this is the best restaurant in the world. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you were just going to go with, well, just give me the, the triple Michelin, you would miss out miss on the it. best restaurant in the world yeah, yeah. because Michelin is a Western sort of whatever. Mm -hmm. it's oh, I American see where you're going. Okay. Thing, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so when you're talking about scales, like when you're talking about scales and music, music theory and all that, like that's what I'm talking about. It's mm -hmm. like you're getting it from a certain kind of thing, but there might be but something else that we've you. never heard yeah. of before that we're not even familiar with. And right. that's where, to me, it's a weakness. No, because when we say music theory, we're talking about a version of a music theory mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that is valuable. Right, because we're only studying our it, Western it's, stuff. It's valuable. Well, you have Mediterranean stuff well, too. Like, they're, they're, not, they're valuable, they're but they're not, they're not, they're not canonical. I'll say it that way. Um, that makes sense. But yeah, man, like... So, lyrically... He's saying the same thing. To become a better person, you need to stop being so jealous and insecure. I have observed these qualities, and I am unimpressed. And then he goes, I am praying to the Almighty One to prevent me from taking up such behavior. <laughs> He's right, though. Being <laughs> jealous and insecure is like, it's trash. It's really trash. <laughs> uh, it makes you feel like trash, makes everybody else around you feel like trash. Uh, I've observed these qualities. See? Okay. And I am unimpressed. That, that's that's the Islamic culture, man, because Muhammad was very understated about things. Like he wouldn't say, like he wouldn't say, like you're ugly. He'd say, like, um, well, the Bible's like that too. It's like, Allah, we guys. Allah. Well, well, that was a, that was a common phrase, but like Muhammad would say, like Allah loves her personality or something like that. You can say, like that's a modernized way of saying it. Yeah. You know what I'm like, yeah. He was very understated, so he's like, I've observed these qualities and I'm unimpressed. <laughs> And then he says, I am praying, I am middle earth to this bitch. I am praying to the Almighty to, to prevent me from taking up such behaviors. That's a very I mean, that's a good way to respond to it. That right? is a because he kind of comes across a little bit judgmental saying, um, well, not really, because he says to become a better person, you need to do <laughs> to do this. Like he's got the answers, and then he's but he follows it up with saying, like, I'm just praying that I don't become that person because sometimes, like it's kind of like this weird. The, I guess the more self-aware you become, the more you realize like how many, and self-awareness mixed with your memory and memories 
where you, you can be like, oh, I, I see this quality in myself now. I maybe didn't see it before, but I always was very annoyed with that quality when I saw it in other people. And then here I am being that person. And it's kind of like a weird, um, where he's praying at the end, like, I don't want to be that person. Like, I think that's good. That's one of the reasons the Bible is mostly narrative. Because if you tell a person you're a jealous, insecure person and that makes you weak, most people are going to say, no, 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 no. But if you go to that same person, you tell them a story about a jealous, insecure person who completely destroyed their life, right? And you say, now, Jack, here's the story of Jack and blah, 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 he destroyed his life. Don't be Jack. You'll be able to accomplish the same thing you were trying to accomplish in, in conversation A. Because now what you've done is you have extracted that guy's flaw and then personified it in somebody else mm -hmm. so that he could point at Jack and go, oh my God, I don't want to be like him. Mm -hmm. Now, in reality, you know you're talking about him, but he doesn't know you're talking about him. He thinks you're talking about Jack. And that's pretty much the Bible. That's yeah. why the Bible is like Well, that. interestingly enough, in the Bible, it, they actually do that. Like you see it walked out. So David, he go, tell him to go. Nope. Um, David in the Bible was, he basically, he takes this, he takes this girl while her husband is off fighting and they end up having sex and she gets pregnant and so calls the husband back and tries to get the husband to go in with her so that it won't, you know, kind of come out what he's done. Um, and the husband is like very serious. I think about, I think, I used to think like pretty negatively that he didn't go in there with her. I'm like, why would he do that? But I think he had the mindset. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Wait, he used was, to be upset at Uriah, Uriah. for I'm not like, going. Why, he's been gone all this time and he doesn't want to go it, with his... Abandoning his, his boys? Well, he didn't abandon them. He got called back. He had to do what he told him to do. But anyway, now I, see it. now I see it differently. Now I'm like, he was with his boys and then he had to leave and come home. And he's not going to go sleep comfortably and do all this whatever while his, while his brothers are out there still fighting. Secondly, I wonder <laughs> if it would get him out of the mindset, too. Yeah, yeah. Call me racist. The European music, scientifically speaking, has the most pleasing intervals to the ear that have the most intervals uh, that have the most tension and release. That said, other types of music serve other purposes. Man, I'm just gonna let that stand by itself, bro. I'm not gonna comment on that shit, man. But that's the that's the encapsulation of why uh, music theory is not canonical. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna go as far as Ben, but. Yeah, man, that's the encapsulation of, uh... <laughs> so David eventually, he, he goes, gets oh, the guy shit. sent to the front of the lines, and he gets killed. And the prophet comes to David, and instead of saying, hey, look at what you did, he starts telling the story, and he's like, there's this guy, he only has one lamb, he loves this lamb, he eats at the table with it, like, he feeds it from its own table, from his own table, like, and, and he just, it's, it's like his buddy. And then he said, and this rich guy who has a bunch of lambs, instead of slaughtering one of his own, he goes and he takes that one lamb from him, kills it. And of course, David is angry. He's like, we're gonna do something about this law of love. And he's like, that's you. <laughs> because he realized he's the one that took, he had a bunch of concubines, wives, whatever he wanted. He's a freaking king, he can have what he wanted. But he took this woman who's married to Uriah, which is crazy because he, that's a long, long story, but he wasn't a part of Israel, but he became part of it because he wanted to be a part of God's people. And uh, that's how he was treated by David, a man after God's own mind. So kind of crazy, but that's that's human nature. You see it right there. And in the Bible, they, it's like that. He does the story to kind of bring him into the understanding of where he actually is. Yeah, and that's that's one of the problems with modern evangelicals is the, the fundamental understanding of the purpose of the story which is not to judge the person in the biography, but it's to see aspects of yourself and your own flaws in a neutral environment where you can admit your own flaws without um, being alone in that admission. It's God's, God's being gracious to us. But instead, what, what we've done is we've taken all the negative aspects of the biography and then we've applied all the negative aspects of the biography to the people we don't like <laughs> and then all the Christ-like aspects of the biography we apply to us. Look at that. <laughs> Which is why you can sit and collect disability and then say you don't want Medicare for all because that's socialism. That's why you can do that. So you, you this, this, um, 
This entire thing, though, indicates a certain sort of standard. Now, this guy is a, from an Islamic background. So, if you're from an Islamic background, then these are qualities that you're born against constantly. Um, mm -hmm. So, I definitely see it from his perspective for sure. Like, but but I like the fact that he says, "I'm praying to the Almighty One to prevent me." Yeah. Because this is a present tense term. Pray ye. Yes. And I think that if Christians would talk about their battles with sin or their battles with corruption or their battles with imperfection or their battles with selfishness, whatever word you want to use to describe our inability to live up to the standard that we all know we should live up to, we look at it as I gained victory over this thing. I gave, and this is Christianese for, I used to have this as a problem. It's not a problem for me anymore. And what I've found through interacting with hundreds of Christians and, and my own life is that it's a lot less of you're, you're trying to, uh, oh, you know, you, this is an enemy, here's the enemy of anger, boom, you put a bullet in his head, it's over with, you'll, 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 you'll never deal with anger again. I kind of put it more in the arena. When I was in, you know, we used to be in sports a lot, and every year, you know, there was the Y'all remember the presidential award? It was like the regional, the something, and then the presidential. And it was like, if you did this many push-ups, this many sit-ups, this kind of agility, whatever. Anyway, it was a Florida thing. But the point was, every year you were testing yourself against what you did last year. And obviously you wanted to improve. But then you got to the point where you were hitting the ceiling of what you could do. But it was this constant, now you're kind of like, like trying to fine tune the screw. And so it was like a constant betterment thing where there was no end, but there was no condemnation as long as you were going forward. And so if I look at battle with sin more in that concept than a enemy that I'm gonna fight and kill and defeat, because to me, it's like, oh, this thing comes up again. Cool, that means it's time to test myself against this, this challenge again. How did I do last time? So last time you did 20 push-ups. 21. So when when that next issue comes in or that next temptation comes in, you're not freaking out and saying, I thought I overcame this. It's like, no, like, boom, I did good last time. I got a resting period. I'm going to go again. Am I going to revert back or am I going to even get better? And am I at the point now where I'm like doing so well at this that it's time, time to tighten the script? Like Tom Brady up to the last year, he had a quarterback coach, like a personal quarterback coach and he paid for on the side. That's just him tightening the screw. That's him that's a two yard difference, right? Like, um, and, and so if you just think about the battle of becoming a better person from that perspective, I think it's a lot easier psychologically to deal with. Yeah. Um, and then when you have failures, because what happens is, you know, in those, in those races and such, and they keep these files on you, if you're down by a second or two, they'll say, what happened? What have you been eating? Have you been sleeping well? Is this, did you get injured? Blah, 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 blah. And they'll ask you all these diagnostic questions. And by the end of it, you know what happened. And it's nothing about like, man, oh, you went backwards. What happened? You know, you it's not like that. It's just like, okay, here are the root cause issues. You got to eat better or you got to sleep better. Okay, why aren't you sleeping well? That's cool. And now we're going to dig into the, you know, so yeah. it, it, if you look at, your, your... And it's not blaming the thing either. It's not being like, oh, well, it was a sleep issue. So what I couldn't have done any better. It's like, okay, it was a sleep issue. So fix the sleep issue. Yeah. Yeah. The presidential medal of fitness. Yeah. It was the <laughs> fitness thing that JFK did. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, like that. So, so I, I, I like the idea that you have, that you're in a constant state of flux and you're in a constant state of self improvement and, 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 it works on the other side too, because like, if you look at your flaws as like this guy that you have to kill and you killed him and you overcame it, it's like, oh, like you're this big arrogant guy. So now when you see somebody else dealing with that same problem, you're like, hey man, why are you such a bitch? I killed it, you should be able to kill it too. But what happens in the other paradigm is that if you're if you're really getting real, real constant, like victory over that situation, you don't start celebrating and strutting around, you do the Tom Brady thing. You go even deeper and you say, how can I fine tune this? And then what else happens? People start calling Tom Brady and asking him for advice. 
Now you can give somebody advice because you systematically worked at this thing because you're looking at it as a journey about fine tuning. It's not a one and done situation. It's a continuous thing. So you're always going to be relevant as a help to people around you. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that the paradigm that a lot of religious people have been is that this bad part of you is horrible, terrible, you need to kill it, you need to destroy it. And I understand there's some of that language in the scripture, but I think it's misinterpreted because people then start sit but there's also the language of running the race in the scripture. Right. That's also a, a metaphor in the scripture. And so if you look at sin, it's like, oh, there's this one monster I'm gonna kill. So you'll see people like, I got saved and I stopped smoking, or I got saved and I stopped cursing, and blah blah blah. And it was like, holy shit, blah blah blah, that's great, bro. Da -da 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 -da. And what they don't understand is nine months later, some horrible thing's gonna happen. And that cigarette's gonna fall out because you forgot that you put it in the cupboard. And you got caught up in a moment of weakness and you smoked that cigarette. But now, because the entire church made this big deal that you had this, you overcame the demon of cigarettes. Now when you start smoking again, not that I'm saying there's a biblical address where it says smoking and cigarettes rock with me. When you start smoking again, now you gotta do the shit behind the scenes. Now you start developing something even worse started with, which is now you've got this habituated thing where I've got this secret, nobody else knows, like, you know, I'm doing all this crazy shit, right? And then it, it channelizes you into all these other issues, like the devil loves it. Anytime I see somebody stand up and give some, like, overnight testimony, I'm always like, God, please love this person. I'm always terrified for them, because I'm like, there, there's a bullseye on that person's back now. If I'm the devil, I'm going to say word for real. And look, I don't live in fear and shit. It's just, I know I've been a Christian my entire life and I've seen so many young Christians because I've, whatever reason, that's why when we used to baptize, we used to baptize people in the uh, in the toxic river in our city. God bless them. It's called the Anderson River. Look it up. Nobody it's disgusting. Died. No, it's real, man. Free fish, free eyed fish, all that shit. And it got, and we, we ended up baptizing so many people that like we ritualized, we, we would pray for people right after we got them out of the water, man. We would surround them and pray for them. And I'd say, God, I'd, that was a beautiful practice. I'd cry almost every time because I was so afraid for them because I knew about to happen. And it wasn't no people going to hurt you because you're Christian, blah, blah, blah. It's just that when you get it, oh, wow, Jesus died for me. Like, oh, I never want to again. Oh, man, this is a new life. Yeah. And you do get a kind of temporary thing where God will kind of relieve you of the sins that are banging you down. So that you, especially if it's the drug stuff, so they can give you a time to get your mind clear. But it's a it's a it's a race of consistent improvement. And but we style it as you if you've got to overcome. And then some of us say if you can't overcome this, you were never a Christian in the first place and just destroy people. Mm -hmm. And there's no patience for those people. Shit like that. So, you know. That's something that I've learned, man. Like, it's possible. Like, I know people who crazy drug habits and then, like, literally had an ecstatic mm -hmm. experience with God and overnight done. Yep. And they fell into drugs as a category, but never that one again. You know what I'm saying? So that shit is real. It does happen. But I like the religion here. I'm praying yeah. consistently for the most high to keep me from yeah. those from those things. I think that that's the best way to look at it, man. That's the best way to look at it. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna look, look, sin as a concept has been completely crucified and defeated on the cross, okay? So I don't need to fight and, and do all that shit because it's already done. Now it's just about, can I be a little bit more like Jesus today than yesterday, which is not difficult for me. <laughs> it's always little little things um that's good i like I, that. I am imp i i as a spectacle i'm like i respect this african thing of the jiggy what they were doing i think it's brilliant mm -hmm. um not my bag not something where i'm like oh i'm gonna listen to this a lot you know how we get down guys like we gotta tell you all the truth it was brilliant lyrically simplistic which is okay but as far as like Enjoyment. I didn't really enjoy the song, but I do absolutely. I, I did want to see it because I, I think Ben said something like this because we had a little discussion about music theory in the chat. But it was cool to see different progressions and different sounds and different. I forgot the name of the band. It wasn't Dream Theater. It was the. Uh, there's a progressive Otep or Opeth. 
Clint Lopez. I don't, I don't know. One of those guys that he, he there's a certain decision that he makes. I forgot what it was, but it's like a signature thing. And everybody that listened to that dude uses it. They have those scars, he uses it a lot. He uses that progression a lot. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if you listen to enough metal, it's kind of mostly on the Western side. So the, the progressions are kind of similar. And so it's cool to be able to sit and listen to Something music that you yeah. cannot anticipate what the next movement's going to be. Oh, That's really yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. So yeah. with that, I'm going to give it a nine for the respect. Uh, I'm going to give it an 8.9. Why do Christians always think people? Trying to hurt them. I know Christians that hurt on. way more groups of people than any Christians I've seen because of who they are. Yeah, I I, I don't. Um, I'm not particularly certain where the persecution complex from American Christians come from. You know, I've been to other countries and uh, I've been to countries where I would say that that's persecution, but I'm an American. They're not American, so the suppression of their speech and the, the added difficulties they have for being Christian, they kind of look at it as, you know, par for the course. They, they, they don't make a big deal out of it. Um, but Christians in America, if you don't, if, if, if you say happy holidays during Christmas, they really believe they're being persecuted. Like, they really believe, like, they're being harmed yeah. because people say happy holidays. It's like, well, I don't know, man. Like, there's yeah. Hanukkah, there's there's a whole bunch of shit yeah. going on during December. There's New Year's. I mean, hell, there's... Thanksgiving, I mean, yeah, I think happy holidays is kind of for everybody. This is everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I think they're just looking at it as like, it used to say Christ mass. So then they, then they would say, you're taking that out of it. You're trying to take, you know, there's like this big, you're taking God out of everything and whatnot. I, I think that if, if, uh, if Christians focused less on what people that don't believe like them are taking Christ out of and more what they themselves are not putting Christ into, then we would have a bigger change in a better world. But my only thing was like, why would we want to make somebody forcefully acknowledge Jesus? Like that's, that's, that's not the idea. It's not yeah, the idea. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's like kind of the opposite of where we're going. Like, if the, you know, so anyway, I, that's the only thing I could say. You know? I'm telling you, know. anytime somebody says happy holidays to me, I would normally say Merry Christmas, but I feel like if I say Merry Christmas, it's almost like, it seems like aggressive after they've said Happy Holidays because of the big stink that Christians have made about it. So I'm like, That's I don't true. know if I really want, because it seems a little hostile. No, it's true. Because I've, I've personally, don't ask me who, but I've personally witnessed that happen where the person, the, the person said, all right, Happy Holidays. And I thought it was genuine, like, and the person said, it's Merry Christmas. This shit is real. These people really do this shit. Yeah, and they they were. It's like this big thing going on. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but you go to Star. They would say go to Starbucks yeah. and tell them that your name is Mary, and your last name is Christmas. So then when they call it out, they're like Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. When they're trying to give you your drink, I'm like all of these machinations and hoops we're jumping through. This is. <laughs> but it's time to vote. Yeah, we're gonna vote against Medicare for all. <laughs> but you better see Merry yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna be working at Barista for a long time because you're gonna have to pay off the medical bills, motherfucker. Because we ain't gonna vote for no socialism, but you better acknowledge Christ. You're giving me my latte. We'll see you guys on the other side of the break. Get out. Sorry, out. Go.